team. Welcome to lesson 2-1, Conjectures and Counterexamples. Today's objectives are to write and analyze conjectures by using inductive reasoning and to disprove conjectures by using counterexamples. So my first question for you is, what is a conjecture? Well, you might have heard this word in previous math classes or in science classes. A conjecture is something that you suspect is true. So you've drawn a conclusion, you think that it's true, but you're not 100% sure. You haven't proven it yet. Um, you haven't come up with or thought through every single possible scenario that could apply to this and have confirmed that they're all true. So you think that a conjecture is true, but you haven't done all of the work to completely prove it yet. That's what a conjecture is. So today we are going to begin by focusing on using some inductive reasoning, which is using a number of precise examples to arrive at a conclusion. So you can fill in that definition on your note sheet. Then take a look at this first example with me, please. So we've got the numbers 2, 5, 8, 11, and 14. So here is my question. What is going on here with the numbers, and what is the next number in this pattern, in this sequence? So I'm seeing that each time we are adding 3 to the previous number to get the next number. So I'm saying that we are adding... 3, and following that logic, I would do 14 plus 3, and I'm getting 17. So 17 is the next number in this sequence, okay? So let's take a look at two more of these types of examples. So let's look here at number 1. We've got 5, negative 10, negative 25, and negative 40, what's happening each time? When we get from 5 to negative 10, negative 10 to negative 25, negative 25 to negative 40, well, we are subtracting 15 every time. So what is the next term? Well, if I do negative 40 minus 15, I get negative 55. That is the next term in this pattern, okay? All right, let's take a look at number four. What's happening here? One, one, two, three, five, eight. Take a minute and think about what do you think is happening here and what is the next term? Okay, so what we see is that we are adding the two previous terms to get the next term. So add the two previous terms to get the next term. All right, well then let's use that here. I've got, okay, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, three plus five is eight, five plus eight is 13. All righty. Let's move on. So again, like we said earlier, that a conjecture is a concluding statement based on the reasoning. So this is something that we, that we are thinking is true based on the reasoning that we've done up until this point. So we want to make a conjecture about the geometric relationships stated here. So let's take a look at number three and number six together, okay? So point B is in between points A and C. Okay, so I'm going to draw my line segment here, and we are saying, okay, if point B is in between points A and C, what conclusion can we draw? So what do we, what do we know has to be true based on the fact that point B is in between points A and C? Well, there's something we can conclude based on our work on line segments and measure in lesson 1.2. If we have this setup, we know that the length of AB plus the length of BC together makes the length of AC. So I could conclude AB plus BC equals AC. That's a conjecture, something that I think is true based on my given information. 
that point B is in between points A and C. Okay, now let's look at number six. I'm told here in number six that points D, E, and F are non-collinear. So thinking back to lesson 1-1, one, one, non-collinear means that these three points are not in a straight line. If they were collinear, they'd all be in a straight line. But points D, E, and F are non-collinear. Draw this out here. So if I've got D, E, and F, Okay, so they're not in a straight line. But what we can say, again, thinking back to lesson 1-1, one, one, we've got three non-collinear points. They can determine a plane. So points D, E, and F determine a plane. So that is a conjecture that we can draw based on the fact that we know that points D, E, and F are non-collinear. Okay, moving right along here to our back page. So now we are thinking about a counterexample. A counterexample is a false example to show that a conjecture is not true. So for example, if we are, if we've made a conjecture, we think this conjecture is true based on the reasoning and the thinking that we've done so far, but we say, uh-oh, I found a scenario that proves this conjecture false. That's called a counterexample. Okay? So, for example, if I said, just give you like a really simple basic example. If I said, all dogs are brown. All dogs have brown fur. Well, a Dalmatian would be a counterexample to that. Because Dalmatians, they are white with black spots they don't have brown fur, that would prove my initial statement false. So we're gonna do just a couple of these here together. We are going to start with, um, we're gonna work through number one and five together. So, start here. If angle A and angle B are vertical angles, then their measures are equal. Our job here is to determine whether this conjecture is true or false. And if it's false, you have a counterexample. Okay, so I'm going to draw some vertical angles here, thinking back to lesson 1-5, okay? So we are calling this um, angle, we're saying, okay, this angle is angle A, right here. And this is angle B. Well, we know if we've got two angles that are vertical angles, by definition, they are congruent. So this is true, and we know this is true based on our learning from lesson 1-5. If two angles are vertical angles, by definition, their measures have got to be congruent. So this conjecture is true. Now let's look at number five. Number five says, if points Q, R, and S are collinear, then Q, R plus R, S equals Q, S. Okay. So if Q, R, and S are collinear, that means they lie in a straight line. So if they lie in a straight line here, then Q, R plus R, S would equal this in the entire length of line segment Q, S. So it looks true in this scenario. Let's think about, could we draw this picture any differently? where Q, R, and S are still collinear, but when this is not true, when it's not true that Q, R, and R, S are equal to Q, S. What if we did it like this? At no point did we say that R was in between Q and S. So I could just flip this. So let's take a look here. Are Q, R, and S still collinear by the way I drew it? Yes, they're all three points still on the same line. But in this case, do QR is this entire segment, so QR is this entire segment, the whole thing plus RS certainly doesn't make this little piece over here. So this conjecture is false, and here is our counterexample. In this case, QS plus, I'm sorry, yeah, in this situation, we have that QS plus SR equals QR, but not 
that QR plus RS equals QS, which is what the problem originally said. Okay, so we showed a counterexample right here that proved this conjecture false. Okie doke. So, some questions to think about before you come into class. Think about writing two conjectures of your own, one that is related to math and one that is not related to math that appear to be true. Let's see if you can come up with a counterexample to disprove them. So we have some examples of some math-related conjectures up above. Another conjecture you could think about for a non-math-related answer would be something like this. The weather in September or the temperature in September is always cooler than the temperature in June. That might appear to be true. You might think September, summer's over, you're, you're getting closer to fall or you've, the season is fall at the end of the month. Like, okay, that might make sense that the weather in September is, off, is cooler than the weather in June. But we can't say that that's true all the time. That conjecture is false because if you think back to the first and second weeks of school, we had some days that were 90 degrees, that had temperatures of 90 degrees. That is just as hot as, if not hotter, some of the days in June. So my original conjecture of the temperature in September is cooler than the temperature in June, that's false because of my counterexample, thinking back to those days, the first and second weeks of school, when the temperature was at 90 degrees or above. All right, so thank you for getting your notes down. We will see you in class. Go team!